Hello, it's Paul McFadden here and welcome to the Property Success Podcast with today's guest, we've got Craig and Michelle. Now, these two are an absolute superstars and I'm going to share more about their journey as we go along because the whole goal of this podcast is to inspire more and more people and you guys are going to love their story from what they've been able to do from really a short period of time, less than 12 months and what they've already accomplished and achieved in the property business. But they took a unique approach to doing this, which I'm going to get into because you guys here, I mean, it's just amazing to see how you both came together as a partnership, but more importantly, how you have excelled in your existing business, what you've gone into since then, and really truly to see what's happened in your property business in that last year. So first and foremost, welcome to the podcast, you guys. Thanks, Paul. Good to be here. Thanks, Paul. Yep. Yeah, we were catching up yesterday and I'm like, you guys are doing so much. It's unbelievable. And we need to talk about it. We need to talk about it. <laughs> Tell the world. I know. Oh, we need a holiday. Either or. <laughs> what do you mean? Just being back from Dubai and everything else, you know? So uh, what I always like to do with these podcasts, I like to take it back to, I guess, hear more about your journeys. So maybe, um, I guess, introduce yourselves, but at the same time, go back to your younger selves all the way up to you guys becoming a partnership with your business, then we can then get into the property chat. Cool. Yeah, no worries. Right, well, I start. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, my name's Craig. Um, so I had a long background in uh, telecoms, commercial telecoms, so mobile, fixed line, phone systems, you know, all the usual stuff. Um, then basically decided that I wanted to move over to um, the other fantastic a utility out there being a uh, gas, electric, and water for businesses. Um, yeah, and you know, set up my own company around about three and a half years ago. And uh, you know, middle of the pandemic, you know, things started to go out of control when it came to unit rates and everything for businesses. Um, so we sort of moved from utilities into more of a green technology company, um, which is how I met Michelle. So yeah. Um, I was organising a online networking event, so I was reaching out to people on LinkedIn that I saw had, you know, hundred odd mutual connections, and Michelle was liking everything that I had, and I thought, well, you're obviously going to come on. <laughs> so um, then, yeah, since then Michelle came on because Michelle's got her own business, um, which she'll tell you about in a second, and started doing a bit of consultancy for, for me, and then you know, obviously, things moved on. So yeah pass over to you for a sec <laughs> yeah so uh, my background's probably a little bit different so I came out of hospitality I did 20 plus years in that sector and um, was exhausted and decided about seven years ago to come out of that and moved into um, business coaching business support for SMEs and micro businesses but it was mostly um, really small businesses and it was women only at that point because it was through Coca-Cola initiative and loved it um, but I was getting broke, servicing a community that were getting richer than me, so that didn't really work. And uh, decided two and a half years ago to set up my own consultancy. Moved into that space, working with different companies and turnovers. And then when Craig reached out to me, we just got on really well. Mm. Like We're a little bit like brother and sister, which is strange because my brother now works for us too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, that's a bit of a dynamic. Um, but... We banter like siblings and we just get on really well. Similar shared values around family, which I think is really important in a business partnership. Absolutely. And we repositioned Utilité to the green tech space. We moved its premises, we updated its website, we've increased its turnover and did a lot of that together while I was consulting. And Craig said we should do some it together. My mindset coach at the time um, is had done Proje. Him and his wife have done it, Jamie McBrady and Lisa. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you'd be natural at that, Michelle. Like, you love making money. You love people. And that's all you need to get started. So in the January, I was like, let's do it. And we jumped on together to, to do the jump start and to see what it was about. It makes so much sense when you hear that story. Because obviously, I'm, I'm aware of that. And I, I just love it because it's a, a match made with both of you guys. You've got a yeah. great business. Yeah. Michelle's got that great mind in terms of coaching and support as well. Both of you's coming together. 
and it's good that you guys are like brother and sister because <laughs> you know in one way that could be you're strangling one another that's a secret <laughs> <laughs> It has been known that I've thrown the teddy across the room a few That's times, it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> no, that is great. But it's good that you guys um, are, you know, you are now working together and seeing the growth in the business. And it's uh, quite interesting because we were chatting about that yesterday in the sense of some of the contracts that you're winning. And especially when it's been, a, and I just want to touch on this because then we'll get into the property chat. But starting a business three and a half years ago, um, then you've just been hit with every curveball you could possibly imagine with the, the global health crisis, with what happened with COVID, and then off the back of the knock-on effects later on with the you know everything going on with Russia and Ukraine and even in the Middle East now, you know, with energy prices and affordability issues and, you know, everything just going through the roof. So that must have been an incredibly turbulent time, but it's good that I guess both of you working together, especially with the right mindset, mindset approach and the right... I guess strategy in mind and how you're going to navigate through all of that stuff. That must uh, must have been some challenging times. Yeah, so the, we had um, existing clients of ours that were basically coming to us when they were about to be due, you know, the renewal of say their electric or their gas or combined, and basically said, look, based on what the unit rates are going up to, we won't have a business. So it turned into we were more of a we're saving the client's business while we still make consultancy money ourselves so you know we get fantastic testimonials and um rather than be a as i call a traditional broker if you like um i don't like the word broker we're a consultancy <laughs> um so the, where they try and maximize you know their commission longest contract length to get as much money in themselves as they can which is not the right strategy so we implemented a strategy not like i had a crystal ball but it was kind of made a little bit of sense especially to me anyway so go for a short-term contract 12 months wait for the unit rate to come down and just pay that 12 month period until you're due again and it worked and we did it for probably two years mm -hmm. and now the rates they're not down to where they were but they've certainly dropped dramatically down to something that a business can actually work and yeah getting fantastic feedback from it yeah and then investors are coming to us wanting discussions you know existing clients so it's like they're trying to say thank you by saying oh yeah i want to do some property do you want some money yeah, <laughs> yeah you're sending it today <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> but i love how you've taken that approach of being a, a consultant and i guess that ties in with yourself as yeah. well michelle too because with that consultant approach it's more thinking about look wait a minute doesn't matter what i can offer you or anything else let me figure out about you let me propose something that's going to be a best solution and i think that that there if you have that that mindset and attitude and all things that you do in business with the customer or the client in mind to best serve them rather than just trying to take what's going to be self-serving for yourself it's just the wrong approach but if you take that approach of consulting them and thinking about the client it also does so much for you doesn't it it's always going to reward you in return if you're able to do that so that's what i love to hear about uh, what you guys have been able to do and that then translates into your, your property business so not only have you seen growth in there and a question is what got you even thinking about property first and <laughs> foremost before you came along just over a year ago at our jumpstart so it was it was the november before the christmas and i was chatting to my coach because everyone should have coached i think Absolutely. so i was chatting to my coach and i said you know my consultancy is going really well but i feel like I've peaked in terms of how I can increase turnover without working more hours B because I was working five, six days, sometimes seven days, long days. And I was like, there's only so much I'm going to be able to earn doing it as a person myself because I am the cons like I'm the person they work with. And we had a chat and he's like, you need to do your multiple income streams. So, so we mapped out a few different multiple income streams and property was one of them. And then when Craig and I were talking in the January about doing something together, I'd already read some of your books. I'd read the Rich Dad Poor Dad book. I was sort of thinking about it and watching the podcast. Craig said, let's do something together. And we were both like, well, what about property? So we literally had like a half hour conversation, I think. And I was like, right, well, there's a jump start then. So we've booked it. We're going. We've booked the VIP tickets. We're going for two days. We'll stay over and we'll make a party. Um, but it was mid-month. So I hadn't had any of my invoices in yet for the end of January. And I'd spent the December ones, as you do. 
So I remember messaging my mom on the Saturday and being like, mom, can you lend me the money so I can put a deposit down because I want to do this? And I don't think I paid her back. So hopefully she'll not listen. <laughs> <laughs> when she finds out the stuff that you're doing, obviously, as your mum, and you have over the last year, I'm sure she'll be like, you know, well proud. <laughs> oh, interested too, but but well proud of what you've, you've built, yeah, you know? Yeah. It's kind of crazy for me when you talk about mums and stuff, you know, because um, um, my, my mum won't, won't watch or listen to this um you know she's um she's read my books and all that stuff though which is kind of crazy but she stayed over the weekend and uh, it was just a nice little moment just chatting away to my mum again and you know my relationship as later years has gone on has really improved my mum and you know it was just nice having a little chat and seeing how far that what we've what, what came from some of the we just were talking about some of the crazy things of our upbringing and everything else and yeah. when you when you reflect back and you remember those moments it's um and see how far you've came it's kind of crazy isn't it Absolutely. Like, definitely my parents sacrificed loads when we were kids. Like, I remember them telling us when I was a bit older that they'd miss a meal to give us a meal. And, you know, they'd split a packet of cigarettes together and that'd be them for the week and things like that. And you'd, yeah. you don't notice as a kid, you just know you have everything you ever wanted. Cause yeah, you don't know any different, you? don't know do you? until you're a bit older. And then now I feel like it's my turn to pay them back and to reward them and create a life for them. And I yeah. know Craig shares that with his family yeah. in terms of values. So. Yeah. It's our responsibility, duty, but also our privilege to yeah. be able to create a better life for all of the people in our circle. Love it. So your mum was your first technical investor, <laughs> right? So she got you She got you on board, uh -huh. uh, which, which is amazing. And um, so both of you decided, right, I'm, I'm going to do I'm going to do Protégé, right? Yeah. Because again, what well, I love what you just said there about your coach, who's also been through Protégé, of Absolutely. course, as well. And then um, what I love what he was saying there is about multiple streams of yeah. income because it's incredibly important in today's day and age that you have at least two source at least two sources of income. Sometimes in most cases it needs to be a little bit more, and especially when it looks like investing, such as investing in mm -hmm. property, because the good thing is we know, because you guys are in property now, is that there are so many different strategies to make money, but building a property portfolio through some of the different strategies is going to bring in that income whether you're working or not and it allows you to then have the time and focus and energy to start building the businesses and and build the lifestyle that you truly want so it's great that first and foremost you started to think about that taking that action coming along so you guys did protege separately so yeah. tell me a bit more about um just what protege was for you and then what I would love to get into is that first deal because your first deal wasn't after Protégé. It was literally during Protégé that kind of happened off the back of attending a Jumpstart event. Yep. So so let's talk about your experience through Protégé and then then that deal. Okay. Yeah, so, well, since coming, well, a couple of days after Jumpstart, back in the office, had a sales meeting, I was absolutely buzzing. You know, it, it was it was crazy. You, you were there, I was, you know, it, I was just like, right, when's Protégé? If Jumpstart was two days, what's five days going to be like in Prodigy. Um, so you you did yours first, didn't you, um, in the March, and then I was the April. Um, and it, well, certainly I loved mine. Um, but yeah, so Michelle did us in March. Um, we already put an offer in for a property before you were even halfway through the week. Um, accepted, all the legals done, the lot. So you could go into that one if you want. Yeah, so... We did jumpstart literally the day after because I've got business background. So I was like, well, I've registered the company. <laughs> <laughs> Craig bought the domains. <laughs> so we had that nailed like within 48 hours of doing the jumpstart. We're like, done. Awesome. Next. Uh, the bank accounts were all on the go because I've got connections through that. So all of those things happened within the first few weeks of doing jumpstart. We started viewing properties together. And we um, have already got some established relationships for a power team, as we've now called them. But at the time, they were just people we knew. Um, and they showed us something. We were like, wait, we can buy that. We can do that. So we put in the offer. I was on the Friday of that protege week. And one of your team had to print off the mortgage documents because the Express guys had done the mortgage app for us. And we were like, wait, done. And we didn't actually get the keys till the May. But... Um, we literally were like, let's just get on with it. Looking back now, though, I think we'd have haggled stronger and we would have made more money. <laughs> so we were, we were just wanted, a bit keen. <laughs> yeah, we were just like, let's go. And then we're like, oh, maybe we could have done a bit better on that. And, and maybe we should have held out and sold it. We've ended up keeping it and renting it. Okay. Um, and with the mortgage rates, the yield's not quite what we are wanting on our, on our future purchases. Something special about your first one. 
Yeah, I mean, like my first proper deal, I just made a thousand pounds, and everybody like you guys are doing deals where you're making significantly <laughs> more. So I guess that um, you know, it's good that you you start getting that the whole, those whole lessons in terms of how to invest in the right way. And as you say there as well, is that it still works well in terms of a, a buy to let. Might yep. not be getting the best yield because of interest rates, but you know, there's another exit there if you decide to to move it on. But being your first deal. You guys have been incredibly proactive off the back of a jumpstart event, just applying what you learned there, then coming along to Protege, going deeper in the content, learning everything else off the back of that, having the realisations that with that extra coaching and support, you could have negotiated a bit <laughs> harder and got a better deal. But hey, look, respect for actually taking action because that's one of the things for me, and I say this even for those that read my book, right, or go to, to a jumpstart event, forget Protege for a second. It's like, just take action. Yeah. Like if you can just take action. And I guess with your backgrounds, it's just that that was just second nature to you. You know, it's like I'm getting a return on my time here in terms of the two days I spent. I'm taking action with this stuff, which yeah. is which has rewarded you. So what I would love to get into, though, is because off the back of Company Protege, you guys have had like this is one year since doing Protege for yourself, yeah. Michelle. It's coming up to a year next month yeah. for, your, for you, Craig. And it's unbelievable what you have done the deals that you're working on. And yesterday we were talking about it and you said, yeah, sometimes you don't feel as if you are getting that far ahead or you're doing much. Or, and it's like, how crazy is that? That yeah. it's the entrepreneurial curse, isn't it? Where you don't feel like you're doing enough. So you guys are doing incredibly well only a year into your property journey. So maybe tell us a little bit more about how things started to unfold because tapping into your network, building a team relatively quickly. And I want to touch on this because you looked at it from a different dynamic. So maybe share a bit more about that. Okay, so I think because we already have the businesses and we weren't giving them up, so I still want to coach, Craig still has utility, and actually now I'm a, a director in that company as well. So we want both of those businesses to continue, maybe in different formats, but still to exist. And I think a lot of people we talk to on the courses and in networking talk about giving up that job and not having to go to work for the someone else. And but we already love our businesses. So we were like, we're not stopping. We want another income stream. We want another business, but we want a business that can work without us as much as it works with us. So it meant for us, we've invested a little bit more money, a bit more time, and we've created a team. And it doesn't work without us. It's still learning. It's still forming. Like I still have to look at deals and say, yes, you can offer that on it. Like there's things we're involved in. But on a day to day, we knew we couldn't go and visit 40 properties in a week. I don't have the time. So we brought somebody in to do it, which might have been risky four months in. <laughs> but it's what we decided to do. And, you know, we brought my brother in. He's actually done protege himself loves what he's doing, is so happy, and, and he's going out there and finding great deals with a little bit of support and coaching along the way. And then recently we hired someone else and that's because I don't want to do the marketing. So it's a case of, we want to build a company that can generate seven figure turnover and can exist without our presence on a day to day basis, which I think makes us a little bit more unique in, in how we're putting it together. Yeah, I love how you've thought ahead, which is sometimes a challenge for most people. I know myself, you know, when I started out my property journey, um, seems like a long time ago, you know, <laughs> the, so the grey hairs are showing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy to think that, and I, and I see this from, from many people, is that um, especially if you don't come from a business background, it's the, the, you're not thinking like a business owner. But the reality is once you start building a property portfolio, yeah. starting to flip property deals, very quickly you realise, I've got a business here, you know, and I need to start treating it like a business. And then it can truly set you up for life and this is what i love about property because building that portfolio turning it into a business that's bringing in an income you've then got a team that can support and help you and, and have that grow and it's great that that you're you know that paul your, your, your brother coming on board and some of the chats you're saying is that how he's going out there building relationships yep. he's securing deals for you now mm -hmm. You know, you, you told me just before this podcast that he's sitting messaging like with, with different deals he's working on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that must be great to see that the business is growing and things are starting to to just take its own route into deals coming your way. It's crazy. Yeah. The other good thing is that both, you know, the utility and the property businesses, you know, they actually both saw it the other week complement each other. So we've got one property at the moment that needs its electric um, capacity upgraded 
in a property. And Michelle automatically says, well, it's a utility issue, sort it out. And I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, right, okay. On the phone to the suppliers, got them involved. Normally you'd have to go to the DNO and it could take maybe three months, sort it out within a couple of weeks just because of the contacts we've got. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, because we do all the groundworks and the DNO stuff ourselves now as well, you know, people within, you know, the Protégé group are coming to us as well. So, you know, any chance of um, installing this? We're, you know, looking at, you know, a six flat development. We need electric, water and all this stuff. So it's all working nicely in a partnership together. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's yeah, you guys are... are um, tendering for our developments as well yeah. aren't you you yeah. know which is great as well so and this is what i love about the community that we're able to build as well because there's no better to su people to support than the people within the community and yeah. that there means you know business goes around and everyone benefits from it it's brilliant so talk a bit more about some more deals that you've got <laughs> because again you guys carved out a little niche in terms of your contacts and be able to secure some unbelievable deals so tell us a bit more about a few other ones that you're working on so um, the main one we've got builders on at the moment, it's a little bit overdue, so it should have been up for sale this month, um, but it'll be up for sale next month. So that's two four bed apartments. So, and it brings in the case really Paul's relationship. So Paul was out looking at an off market that we'd got him into, um, was touring that, came out the door and there was an agent showing the property opposite in the corridor. And he was like, well, we buy properties. Can I have a look? And he just went in and started chatting to the agent. So within two hours, we'd bought the two apartments. <laughs> into, and it was just him being willing to put himself out and have a conversation and us finding the off market in the first place yeah. brought those deals to us. And, you know, from that, we had them in November. Um, it's taken a little bit longer, but they're going to be beautiful, stunning apartments at the end of it. And so they'll both be up for sale. We're staging one of them. We're going to try and sell two off one. Okay. And see how we do. And um, an anticipating numbers off the back of that is always yeah. exciting to hear. <laughs> so over time means over budget. <laughs> <laughs> Look her both, yes. so. but, but I think what I would say was we bought really well. Yeah. So, you know, the two units together have been purchased at a really good price point as a combined purchase. And then the end market for them will be around 270,000. So we're going to be walking away with over 65, 70,000 pound profit on the back of it. Yeah. Um, which sounds like a whole lot of money and it is, but, but for us, it's just the next step on the, on the ladder to the next thing. We've already used that money in principle for something else that we're working on further down the line. So we'll always roll back in. We're not looking to make a quick buck and take money back out. We're looking to build a company. Yeah. Now, what's amazing what you've just shared there, you've secured two deals, by the way, there's more, <laughs> which, I want, which I want to talk about as well, which is amazing. Um, but you've secured those two deals. And for, for anyone who's just looking to do one property deal, and even though you went over budget with your, yeah. your, your refurb, and that's fine, you're still making, what, 65K profit. Yeah. And it could potentially sell for more, couldn't it? So from that point of view, that's astronomical. That's amazing. That's like three times someone's typical salary or two times at least you know so from yeah. that point of view it's amazing to see what can happen you've got a different mindset of course which i love which is to grow the business yeah. to build that seven figure property business and this is what i love about you guys is because you already know that's a vision you already know that that's what you're aiming to go and do and because off the back of that and what you're doing here and the momentum you're building the team that you're growing it's just a matter of time it's crazy to think so that's those two um, you're also working on a couple of other developments. You're JVing with people within the community too. So maybe tell us a bit more about those. Yeah, so um, one of them is a three-bed bungalow in Dundee. Actually comes with a bar. So but sadly for me, we're taking the bar out. But <laughs> <laughs> we walked in. It was like, it's like 60s decor and it's got a whole bar with optics upstairs. It's very strange. <laughs> um, but the footprint is massive and, yeah. and the grounds are, are, are fantastic. So... We looked at the project and decided we wanted to do it. Um, we also acknowledged very quickly every wall except the, the sort of the outside of it is coming down. <laughs> so we were like, that's not us. That's not for us to do on our own. We've got a power team of trades that can do smaller turnarounds, smaller flips. But for that kind of work, we felt we needed to partner with somebody with more experience. And the community provides that. So we reached out to a team in the community and we said look would you like to jv we've got the deal we've got the money to buy it 
but we want someone to, to do the work. And so we've come to an agreement with them. We were all happy with that, going, that's going to be great. We're going to turn that three bed, awful bungalow with a roof coming in into a five bed, five bath, um, stunning home. Um, and then we came up with another property, <laughs> as we do. Um, so we spoke to Express and I said, look, I want to take this pot of money I've got for that one, divide it between two and purchase both because I want two deals. And I think Bilal's sort of starting to not pick up the phone almost when I phone him now. <laughs> so he's like, hi, Michelle. <laughs> so, uh, and he's like, okay, we can do that. I was like, great. So then went back to the, the JV guys and I was like, I can get this. Will you do both? And they were like, awesome, we can do that. So we've now got two deals on the go. One's quite a big conversion, which is the Dundee one. And the other one's in Octamukti. Um, and that's less of a re rip out, but still a chunky conversion. Um, but on the back end of that, we've got a, a good, healthy profit on both. So again, this is what I love about it because you got creative yeah. in the sense of this is a, a this is just a common thing with you guys. You get the deals, right? You're you're, you're finding the deals, yeah. Yeah. and then you're going, okay, let's find the money. How are we going to finance these? You're on the phone to Express Mortgages. You're chatting to them, but at the same time, you're then looking at what collaborations could be done to. And this is what's the making of someone who's going to go out and do some great things because they're open to do not only what they've got with their own funds to go and invest, they're open to doing joint ventures, they're open to partner with other people and stuff. Yeah. So with that project there, um, those two you're working together on JVs, I believe you're going to be doing a lot more as well with your JV partners on that, which is great. Rough profits expected in those ones? Uh, so about 100,000 from each. So for us, it'll be 100K because it'll be, it'll be a split profit. Um, but yeah, two hundred k profit on the projects, and the turnaround on the Dundee ones sort of six to eight weeks. So yeah, um, we'd expect those profits within six months, really. So a couple hundred thousand pounds profit there, obviously being split with the GV partners. They're bringing their expertise. You're bringing your expertise with finding the source and deals. Match made in heaven. Yeah, perfect. Which is unbelievable. And then, of course, off the back of all of this, one of the things that I love working closely with you guys as well is that when I get some messages like Paul. I've just found a development. The GDV is in a hundred plus million. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Paul. <laughs> Me again. <laughs> and um, and it's, it's great. We know that those ones take a lot longer and um, in most cases um, take a lot of time and effort and might not come to anything. But what I love about it is that you've put some time and effort in because it's the again, the end goal in mind of where you want to get to and, and learning that whole process as you go through it, which led you to being in Dubai and speaking to potential funders and all that stuff over there. So yeah. maybe just in a high level, because I know it's still quite sensitive in the sense of, you know, you know the deal's still live and everything else. So just high level without getting into too much detail, because it's always exciting to see what's possible because less than a year ago, you know, you hadn't been involved in any property. <laughs> Then you're starting to build a portfolio. You're working on deals. You've got the best part of a couple hundred grand net profit coming in for you guys. And then you're looking at some unbelievable, potentially huge deals. Yeah. Yeah. So um, one of the contacts that I had from the property side um, approached us with an opportunity, a bit of land, um, you know, not far from Dundee. You know, planning approved, once approved, the lot, you know, 34 to 35, you know, apartment renovations, um, multiple, you know, four bed houses on the land and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, all oh, right, okay, yeah, how are we going to go and raise that? And then, you know, we just said we would keep in contact and all that stuff because he's asked us for some groundworks on his own projects anyway. Yeah. Um, and then speaking to one of my suppliers that, you know, has a, one of the owners lives in Dubai and what to do an intro into potential investor. So me and Michelle thought it'd be rude not to meet in person. So <laughs> we, we decided to go to Dubai and meet our um, energy supplier and then get the intro to the potential investor. So um, in negotiations with, you know, the investor, but things like that, you know, that sort of value back and forward, you know, could be months of negotiation, whether anything actually comes of it or not. Um, might not be that venture it might be another one but through the networking of you know contacts that we've got we've found a potential investor with access to that level of funds and you know 
we came out of the meetings just thinking, what are we doing? You know, a cu couple of flips, a couple of bite of lets or something, fair enough. But this is, you know, not our world. And when I left you the voice note and, you know, we went on the, the Teams call, you said, you guys shouldn't be doing this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get it. And we were just like, yeah, well, you know, we'll give it a go. Um, I said that in a positive way. It wasn't like <laughs> oh, you shouldn't be doing no. that. It's like it's like you shouldn't be this <laughs> far in your journey. You're doing this. This is unbelievable. It's crazy. Yeah. I think oh, it was no. that surreal thing for you, and and it's really surreal for us. Like we sat in a private club in Dubai that you can only go into if you're a member, and we had to get escorted in. It was all very, very intimidating, I guess, in in some ways. But then we sat with these guys, and it was really casual. And you know, they sat there with hundred million plus budget of to invest in different things and you know they're actively seeking investment in the UK and we came away going well that was a really nice chat with some really nice people and it didn't feel like they were any different to us and I think we felt like we belong in that space we didn't feel awkward once we were sat down mm. but prior to it there was definitely an imposter thing of like last week we were like almost in tears we needed to get 100k and now we're sat having meetings with people about tens of, uh, of millions for a project and I think what we learned from all of the things we've done and the projects we've already looked at, we'd looked at a previous one at 10 million, is that nothing is too big. It's really about how you apply yourself to it and the principles are the same. So whether you're looking at 100K or 100 million, the numbers still need to be done and the diligence still needs to be done. And at the end of it, you'll make more profit, but the process you've gone through isn't dissimilar. Yeah. You just have to apply yourself to go through it. Yeah, I think it's um, mo it's in most people's mindset, isn't it? Because it's the common thing I hear with a lot of people at their the beginning of their journey, uh, which is I'll just do one of these deals first, and I'll just do that. Oh, that's quite a big development. Maybe one day, and and that's fine. That was me. Yeah. Like like I never thought I would ever get involved in land or new build developments and the projects I'm involved in. That's only been something over the last six stroke seven years for me. You know, I've been involved in property for, for 19 years. Yeah. So to, to put things out in perspective, not only have you guys achieved more in your first year than I did my first five years in property, <laughs> your mindset is just so far <laughs> ahead as well, which is just amazing. I just love it. You know, it's just, uh, it fills me with so much joy when I see people just winning, truly, you know, and it's because you're applying yourself as well. And with that right mindset, breath of fresh air it really is truly and it's amazing to see that you're taking action and you just mentioned there what you want to pick up you're in tears to raise 100k yeah and 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 but here's the thing because we've had these conversations you are proactive you've got great deals you know that you're going to get people that want to work with you because of the mindset and approach that you have and lo and behold you raise the money and you're in a deal that's going to be making you six figures yeah you yeah, know so one of the things we spoke about yesterday, which I want to touch on, which ties into, because we we're we going to have you guys back on the podcast multiple times. I just know it because the way that you are moving, the deals you're working on, it's just, you know, we're going to have lots to talk about. I'll probably do a deal breakdown as well, which would be quite fun okay. to, to get into as well. But going forward, you've grown the team. Yeah. You've now got um, someone to come in to support you with marketing as well, which is, which is amazing because it's going to help you put yourselves out there further too. You're, you're still looking at deals. You're still getting deals coming through. You're still looking at potential JV partners to work. So what's the next evolution if we're to fast forward maybe 12 months from now? What's the goal in terms of growing the business and where you guys want to be? I'll go. go on. Yeah, go on. <laughs> He's like, she just wants the money. <laughs> so I think what we found over the last three or four months is we've been doing a lot of groundwork. So we're now in a situation where we've a, a number of investors we're working with to build their portfolios mm. and the approach we're taking to that is very similar to my business consultancy around, we don't wanna just find them a deal and leave them to it. We wanna help them with understanding their business, help them to grow their companies into what they want them to be. It's fully hands off or hands on, depending on what they want. And we wanna have less of them, but people who wanna build companies and portfolios rather than do one flip and be happy with that because that's not really where we're at. Um, so we've now got four, signed up working with us another one due on this month so probably won't go much more than that maybe maybe one or two more um and focus then we'll move on to us getting fixed return investors because we are finding deals and we're hard working and we're getting those things through the door now and the, what we ultimately need is capital so you know not wanting to put express out of business but they take a big cut so if we can use uh, investor funding then we can do much more much faster 
Yeah. What I love about what you guys are doing is that for most people when it comes to finding JV partners or getting fixed return clients, which is effectively someone that's going to put money in for a percentage return, there's many people out there that want to do that, but they want to do it with someone that they can trust, yeah. that they believe have got a track record or have been able to do things, they're getting results. And the good thing about your whole strategy, uh, which I can't compliment you enough on, is that you're building a team, you're marketing yourself incredibly well, with your own backgrounds and the business coaching and your own business as well and you guys working together and, and doing deals that people can see and they can see that they can be profitable as well, you're building that track record in such a short period of time that you're going to have people queuing up wanting to work with you guys. Which then presents the next problem. <laughs> We've got tons of deals, we need even more. You know, it's amazing, good problems to solve. It's good. I think it's that problem opportunity piece, isn't it? And it's like you said before, when we find a deal, we're like, well, we better go get some money. Like, that's the way that we look at it. So, you know, we've even said to Paul, well, go and find the deals, Paul. Do the pricing and get the deals at the terms we've agreed. And then we'll have to do our bet. And our bet is always to find the money. Yeah. yeah. You know, so we offer on everything. We don't go and see something unless we've ran some numbers in advance. Yeah. And we know there's going to be money in it because it's a waste of time driving around the country looking at stuff that's not going to work. Yeah. Um, and we offer on everything we go in to see. Yeah. And you're putting the reps in. Like, it's crazy to think that one of the things I talk about, even from reading the book, is you have to get out there and view yeah. properties. Yeah. You have to go out there and build relationships. And it's the fundamentals that you guys are doing incredibly well. It's crazy how people want to skip the fundamentals. Like, skip the fundamentals and think that they can just sit on their chair at home and just meditate for a deal to fall on their lap. I mean, how fucked up is that in I some know. ways, you know? I'm all for mindset, but you can't just visualise the property's <laughs> yeah. going to make you a shitload of money, can you? It just doesn't happen. <laughs> so it's just fundamentals, getting the basics right and um, putting in the reps and you'll see that the rewards that come. Because it's one of those ones that I always say to anyone who's maybe starting out. Mm. Like for me, when I started out at a young age at 19, not having any guidance or support, all I thought in my head, if I view a minimum of 10 properties a week, because of course back then I had a job and all that kind yeah. of stuff too, so I thought, like if I can just view 10 properties a week, over the course of the year, I have viewed literally hundreds of properties. I'm giving myself a high probability to secure one deal. <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought, because back then at 19, buying one property even seemed like so far out of my reach. And just because... I applied myself, viewed the properties. I tell you what, the first 10, 15, 20 properties, I had no idea what I was doing. Literally no idea what I was doing. Way out of my depth. Imposter syndrome kicking in yeah. like crazy. State agents not wanting to take me seriously. You know, it's just crazy to think. But that's the learning process. And of course, you guys have been through Protégé. Paul's been through Protégé. So from that point of view, it's um, having a good baseline understanding yeah. and knowledge and knowing with confidence that if you make offers, the numbers are going to work and you're getting some great deals. So it's great that you've just doing the basics, doing it right and applying your business knowledge to it and seeing that level of growth in such a short period of time. You must, be, must be incredibly proud of yourselves. Come on. Yeah. It's been all right, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we, we are that serial entrepreneur, aren't we? So we're like, that's all right, but, you know, we could do better. <laughs> we could, we, 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 you know, we're happy where we're at now, yeah. but we know we want far more. And I think that's the piece that, you know, we know we've put in the work and done what we could to be where we're at, but there's always more we can do and there's always more we can achieve. And, you know, we want good money. Like, that, we're not in it for pennies. So I think we'll always be pushing for extra and for bigger deals and better opportunities. And if there's something that we don't know, you know, we're obviously not afraid to reach out, are we? <laughs> get good old WhatsApp, Sorry, eh? <laughs> WhatsApp voice notes, isn't it? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think we're we're proud of what we've done so far. Yeah, so. no, it's great. I love getting um, check-ins from you guys as well because it's um, you know, it's as much with with anything in life. There's challenging check-ins with everyone. But there's some amazing check-ins there too. There's check-ins that make my head spin too, which is great. I love those ones. It's like, great. Well, let, let, let's look at it. Let's look at it and see what we can do and make this happen. It's exciting, you know? Yeah. Um, so I guess like as we bring this to a, a close, you guys have, have been freaking awesome. Um, not only just from what I've seen you guys doing, but just how you, you know, um, contribute within the community too. Anytime that I interact with anyone, you know, you guys are a bundle of joy. 
and that comes across when you're talking to other people as well and no wonder you've got people who want to to work with you and partner with you and and all of that good stuff too and i i, I know that the next thing we have another catch up here you know you will be working on more deals and it's quite exciting to see what's going to happen and i'm sure for those that are watching or listening in, they'll be incredibly inspired and by just listening to this to see what's possible if you just apply yourself so i guess as we bring us to close is there any kind of anything else you want to maybe share um, how people can reach out to connect with you guys yeah so we have a couple of different websites but the easiest way to find us is on our linkedin to be honest because we're both really active on linkedin um so we have property wealth on linkedin but also ourselves so just search our names and you'll come across us and really where we're at now is looking at the fixed return piece um but also continue to help people you touched on it you know we we genuinely care about people and if we can help somebody on their journey then we do want to do that and We've done that with people in the community and out with it because it's part of who we are, you know, and then if they then work with us in the future, great. If not, if we've helped you and inspired you and, and moved you a step forward, forward, then that's great too. Amazing. Good stuff. Well, you guys have been great. I know this won't be the last time, you know, and what we'll do is we'll link off to in the, the show notes in the comments below and um, to your socials. So you can connect with you guys too and then all that good stuff as well. And as always, if you get any questions at all, pop it in the comments below. I'll be getting in there to respond and I'm sure the guys will keep an eye out for those as well. So until next time, all the best and bye for now.